welcome to another Triple Ones Wargaming Podcast. This is episode 11, and I'm your host, Jasper Axelson, joined with my co-host, Zach Wallace. And today, we're going to be going over the last bit of the Eldar Codex. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're going to call this the uh, Aspect episode. Indeed. Yes, a lot of aspects in here. We're going to be going over just kind of like the aspects, and then things that have changed, and then the ex- the Exarch powers. Then we're also going to go over some of the other data sheets that we like. Yeah. Looking so, way to close out the codex. Yeah, give it some closure, if you will. So we're going to start off with the uh, Crimson Hunter Exarch. Uh, really, we're going to review the Crimson Hunter, and then we're going to go ahead and tell you what you can mm-hmm. upgrade it with when you upgrade it to the Exarch. So diving in. So one change to this is that you, there used to be two separate data sheets. There used to be the Crimson Hunter and then the Crimson Hunter Exarch data sheet. Hmm. Now it's just the Crimson Hunter, and you can upgrade it with points to Crimson Hunter Exarch. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and you can only ever take one Crimson Hunter Exarch in an army. So, a hmm. little, little different there. Um, they One of the changes to this is they... Not a lot changed data sheet wise One of the changes is you can no longer pivot twice like you used hmm. to be able to. You can only do the one normal pivot. So, sad, bad. Not too bad, though. Um, and then the guns changed. That's the other big change. So, like, the Bright Lance got the D3 plus 3 damage... And then the pulse mm-hmm. laser, laser changed from 3 damage to D3 plus 3. That's nice. We love that. Love mm-hmm. to see that. Um, and then the star cannon, if you wish to take that, is now just the two shots. Strike 7 now. AP 3, 2 damage flat. Yeah. So, pretty good. Not bad at all. Yeah, so it didn't change too much, but enough to be noteworthy. But where the real sauce is, if you're taking a Crimson Hunter, gotta take an Ezid Exarch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have to. A couple of those powers are insane. One of them in particular. One of them in particular. Saucy. We'll go over that now. As soon as I find it. <laughs> Ninth Ed Codex layout. Yeah, even with bookmarks, it's just it's a maze. It truly is. <laughs> All right, got this bad boy. So before we go over any of the other Exarch powers, um, it's important to note when you upgrade it with points, it becomes kind of like a special Exarch. So universally you get plus one wound to that model so like howling banshees are three wound exarchs are three wounds now shining spears are four wounds crimson hunter exarch is 13 wounds that's kind of cool yeah and then um if the model is a crimson hunter dark reaper swooping hawk or fire dragon exarch improve its ballistic skill by one which is solid and then if it's a striking scorpion howling banshee shining spear or warp spider add one to the attack characteristic yeah, that's so, very solid. Pretty sweet. So in addition, keep that in mind when you're looking at the points, you're also getting that, which is, you know, it's easy to forget, but it's big. That's actually really cool because, like, as we're seeing in a lot of, like, the Ninth Ed books, everybody's getting these little point upgrades that they can use, but you're getting, like, a little buff on top of it. Yeah, like... kind of cool. Yeah, so, like, you know, you initially might look at the points upgrades and be like, oh, man, 20 points for that? But you're forgetting mm-hmm. you're also getting a wound and an attack or a wound and ballistic skill upgrade. Right. Like, everything's getting the extra wound, and then you're also getting one ballistic skill or attack. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, so diving into the Crimson Hunter Exarch, there's three upgrades for each of these. The upgrades are Eyes of Cain, Strafing Assault, and Swooping Evasion. Mm-hmm. And they are 30 points, 20 points, and 25 points, respectively. Okay, so not cheap. <laughs> not, not cheap, not cheap. Already an expensive model. But uh, Eyes of Cain is each time this model makes an attack that targets an enemy unit that can fly, that attack automatically hits the target. That's really good. That's insane. <laughs> that's right insane. there, that's pretty good. Oof. It's 30 points, but you're going to be putting two Bright Lances and the two Pulse Lasers on this model if you're doing yeah. this. You want the four big gun shots. It's like the Tyranid Flyers, you got the Harpy and the Hive Crone, and the Hive Crone is supposed to be like the anti-flyer one. This just puts that to shame. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you're already getting plus one to wound against flyers yeah. with this model. So Oof. you're automatically hitting plus one to wound with strength eight and strength nine. That's good. <laughs> it's not bad at all. That's actually pretty good. I mean, you're wounding a vast majority of things on twos and threes. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. All right, the next one... Do you want to go over the next one? Yeah, I can touch on the next one. So for 20 points, you get Strafing Assault. Each time this model makes a ranged attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. Very solid. 
It's all right, you know. It's pretty yeah. good. A lot. The only problem I have with it is most of the weapons you're shooting with it are like AP three or AP four. Yeah. Kind of don't really need ignore cover. That's but very fair. Eh, it's not horrible. <laughs> it's not bad, but I mean, you're not gonna take that over the eye of Kane. Yeah. Like. And then the other one, you're probably also not taking it over. Swooping evasion. The model has a five up invulnerable save. Yeah, I'd probably take this if I was taking a second one. Yeah, and actually, I think you can't only take one swooping hawk. Oh, or one yeah, crimson, one yeah you can only yeah. take one crimson hunter exarc. So, I think if you're doing it, you're taking eyes of Kane because of how cool All it right. is and how good it is, actually. It's so good. Yeah, I can't see taking the other two over eyes of Kane. Right, but... So, it starts off pretty strong. I mean, like, if you want to take a crimson hunter, I'd upgrade mm-hmm. it to a crimson hunter exarc. Yeah, I mean, 30 points gets you a whole lot. Plus one wound, what is it? Plus one uh, ballistic skill, or is it attack? Uh, It's ballistic skill, but... Mm -hmm. So you're hitting on twos, and it automatically hits. So you don't Mm -hmm. really even need to roll, Uh, obviously. Yeah. 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 (laughs) But plus one wound is nice. But yeah, then plus one to wound. So anything that's T7, you're wounding on twos. God. That's good. (laughs) But uh, moving on, we got a staple. The Dire Avenger. Oh, yeah. The classic. Now, the biggest change to this, outside of anything else, is it's no longer a troop. It's an elite. Sad to see it go. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, I liked having all aspects without needing to do, like, a weird detachment. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't necessarily love, like, running guardians, just from a fluff perspective. Yeah. Like, I don't want to run my painters and my farmers out there all the time, you know? I want the warriors out there. Right. Yeah, I liked when Dire Avengers could be taken as, like, your basic ground troop. Right. And I kind of get it, because if you could span these, that would be disgusting. Because we're about to go over how good they are now. Um, so, some of the upgr- some of the uh, differences is they now have two attacks, base, Exarch has three. And then the biggest change is the Avenger, Shirk, and Catapult, and what that can do. This is now same range, 18 inches, it's Assault 3. Same strength, four, AP two now, mm. one damage, has a shuriken rule. A shuriken rule is you, on a wound roll of a six, it's an additional two AP. Yeah. So these are flat two AP with a AP four on a six. That's not bad at all. That's awesome. That's super good. Um, in addition, this unit also has the uh, defensive, defense tactics rule. So when you're when it contains an, a Dire Avenger Exarch, which even if you don't upgrade it with points, you're still going to just take one because it's free. Mm-hmm. Um, the model, this unit can now do actions and still shoot. Ooh. Ooh, you like that, don't <laughs> I you? I do like that a lot. That's, you make it a six mm-hmm. man, so you automatically do R&D, deep strike in, now you're doing R&D and you're shooting. I like that a lot, especially even for, uh, not for secondaries, but there's so many like tertiaries in the, yeah. the mission pack now. There are, yeah. That involve doing an action. So yeah. like. Get it, this, get the most bang for your buck. I love mm-hmm. this unit. Big on utility. Big on utility. The, uh, a lot of the, um, the, the Exarch like upgrades, like the Shimmer Shield have changed a little bit, but they're all kind of the same. I still like just taking dual Shirk and Catapults because mm-hmm. it's free. So you just get Dexerk has six shots at strength right. for AP two one damage, so pretty saucy. Um, now we'll go over the uh, point upgrades for that. Do you want to take over yeah. the first one? I'll do the first one. So the first one we got here is uh, twenty points for defensive stance. So in your shooting phase, while this unit contains a dark, or, uh, while this unit <laughs> contains a Dire Avenger Exarch model, it's a mouthful. Models in this unit can make attacks with ranged weapons even while this unit is within engagement range of enemy units and can do so even if other friendly units are also within engagement range of any of those enemy units. If they do so, these attacks can only target enemy units within engagement range of this unit. So you can shoot into combat. It's okay. Not bad. It's not, not horrible. Um, the only thing that strikes out to me is as an Eldar player, if your, stuff, if your T3 bodies are in combat, they're mm-hmm. probably already dead. Yeah, you're probably not going to survive till your shooting phase. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's kind of cool. When it comes up, mm-hmm. it's cool. Um, the next one is Shredding Fire. This bad boy comes in at a whopping 25 points, but while this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch model, each time a model in that unit makes a range attack with a Shuriken weapon, the Shuriken ability takes effect on a wound roll of a 5+, plus instead of a 6. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good. I mean, immediately you look at this, and you're going to want to take a, the biggest unit to a 
get mm-hmm. the most bang for your buck out of this. I mean, and if you're taking a big unit, what is it, um, Hail of Shurikens or whatever, where sixes to hit are an additional hit? Yep. Yeah, the, yeah. there's a strat. Yeah. 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 And then there's different far-flung craft rolls that mm-hmm. uh, also can buff shurikens, but this is pretty good. Yeah. This is not bad. Dude, I like shuriken weapons a lot in the new book. Uh, who would have thought that just adding base AP would make shurikens really good? Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, do you want to take the last yeah. one? My personal favorite. Personal favorite, eh? So for 10 points, nice and cheap. Nice and cheap. Price to sell, we have Stand Firm. Uh, while this unit contains a Dire Avenger Exarch model, uh, two points. So the first point is this unit has a, the objective secured ability. If this unit already has the objective secured ability, then for the purposes of determining which player controls an objective marker, each model in this unit counts as two models. So obsec and double obsec. Then add one to the leadership characteristic of models in this unit. So just a nice buff on top of that, but giving them obsec or double obsec for 10 points? I Just the obsec. That's wild. Alone. Yeah. Yep. Like 10 points, the cheapest one, and your unit's now obsec. I like that a lot. I love I love taking a six-man unit and just giving it obsec, and now it's kind of like he's a troop again. You can use it for different mm-hmm. objective stealing. Especially, like, the meta right now is a little more elite-based. People aren't taking as many troops with obsec. Yeah. A couple clutch obsec units can be huge. Right? And a unit of six of these with this obsec trait is, if you take them bare bones, it's only, like, 82 points. So it's really not bad. Quite cheap. Quite cheap for some night. Good obsec. You can do actions, still shoot, like, great right? unit. Great unit. Nice multi-purpose unit. Right? Um... The next unit we're going to go over is the Warp Spoders. <laughs> a personal favorite just because of saying Spoder instead of Spider. <laughs> the group loves it. Everyone does. Pretty um, sure the entire group calls them Warp Spoders. Yep. I don't think any... Some people might not even know that they're spiders. <laughs> but uh, they've changed in a couple different ways as well. And for the better, might I add. Um, okay. They also have to... They've gotten... The, every. I think every model has gotten like an extra attack. Mm-hmm. So that's... Solid. I mean, you don't want them in combat, but it's cool. It's something. Yeah, it's a little something, something. Uh, these bad boys are twenty points a model, and um, oh, I forgot. I silly me, Zach. I forgot to go over aspect armor. Ooh, I, for, yeah. I just forgot. Okay, so all aspect warriors except for the Crimson Hunter Exarch or Crimson Hunters have a five up invulnerable save now. Just all the time. All the time. So your Shining Spears, your Warp Spiders, your Dire Avengers, Howling Banshees, all of it. Five of Invulnerable all so the time. So cool. Oh, now they're... Oh, I can't tell you how awesome that is. Like, you might think, like, oh, five up, that's not great. But compared to not getting an Invulnerable, like, a five up, it saves a third of the time. Like Right? And when, you know, a lot of your stuff is saving on, you know, four up. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's AP2, you're still saving on fives instead of sixes. Yeah. It's makes a world of difference yeah that's really cool so yeah i can't believe i forgot to go over that but <laughs> here we are um the uh, warp spider jump generator changed a little bit so it is each time this bear makes a normal move battle focus move advances falls back or makes a charge move until that unit until that move is finished models in that unit can move horizontally through models and terrain features that cannot finish on top of another model or its base obviously um when that bear is unit makes a battle focus move you can roll 2d6 instead of 1d6 so hmm. that's the fire that's the jump shoot jump yeah um and then if you roll double ones you suffer one mortal wound yeah so it's fair trade it's basically never happening um so that's really good and then the gun changed as well for the better it is still 12 inch range but it's now assault d6 instead of assault two so it's d6 strength six ap2 one damage blast nice these guys just clean up hordes Mm-hmm. like these are powerful like man d6 shots is crazy good dude what's the name of their death spinners their yep. weapon yeah death spinner cloud of monofilament wires yeah yeah fun yeah they're very good um and the last good rule that they have is the flicker jump so this changed. It used to be like when you got shot at, you could roll the dice and get a negative one to hit. Oh, not bad. Mm-hmm. Now, it is the first time in each phase this unit is selected as a target of a charge. If that unit is not within engagement range of enemy units, it can make a normal move up to six inches. That's solid. Cannot advance, it cannot overwatch or set to defend. 
Man, the shenanigans you can pull with just being able to fall back six inches when you're selected as a target of a charge. It's like the the Admech pony rule, but just baked in. But just baked in. No stratagem. No problem. <laughs> like, put these bad boys on an objective. Oh, you want to charge and get on? Nope. It means, too, if you have multiple warp spider units, you can just fall back with multiple. Yep. It's not, like, locked to a strat. You can only use once per phase. Yeah, it's awesome. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll uh, go over the Exarch upgrades you can give them. So the okay. Spider's Lair. <laughs> so the Spider Lair is 15 points, and it's once per battle. At the end of the movement phase, if this unit is wholly within an area terrain feature and it contains a Exarch model, you can select that terrain feature to be webbed. If you do so until the start of your next turn, enemy units that enemy units treat that terrain feature as if it had difficult ground. It's pretty cool. And then each time an enemy... Unit ends any type of move, excluding pile in or consolidate, within that terrain feature, roll 1d6 on a 2-up, it takes d3 mortals. Yeah, that's I, really cool. I think it's really cool. I mean, I don't, is it the best? Probably not, but is it really cool? Yes. Oh, yeah. The like, spider's lair, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, leaving webbed traps like after they leave an area, that's right? just cool. It's that's thematic. Just, yeah, right? I love that. Uh, so up next, we have Surprise Assault. Uh, 15 points. If this unit was set up preparing a sudden assault and contains a warp spider exarch model, when this unit is set up on the battlefield for the first time until the end of the turn, each time a model in this unit is selected to shoot, it makes one additional attack with each death spinner it is equipped with. So it's basically d6 plus one shots on your death spinner. Not bad. Not bad. You know, playing Tau, how good d6 plus two flamers are. Mm-hmm. That It doesn't seem like much, but man, is it good. It adds up really quick. Yep. It's minimum two shots. It's it's super good. Yeah. I If you really need like them to clear out a horde or something, if that's what you're taking them for, Yep. not bad for 15 points. And the last one is Web of Deceit, also 15 points. Love the names. Awesome names. <laughs> It's once per battle if this unit contains a Warp, Spark egg, warp Spider Exart model. Instead of making a battle focus move, you can redeploy it. Very good. Just awesome, yeah. Basically, they become swooping hawks for a turn. I like that a lot. It's very good. You, you move in, you shoot, and then you just boop, run and away. For 15 points a piece, these upgrades aren't that expensive either. No, they're really not. They're very the price to sell, as you would say. Mm-hmm. Price to sell. What do you, <laughs> what do you think of Warp Spiders overall? I like them a lot. I love their, like, tricksy harassment units. Um, how much does it cost for, like, a minimum-sized unit? They are 20 points, so it's 100 points for five. That's not bad at all for, like, a little tech bad. piece. No, I, I like... I'm thinking... I don't know if I upgrade them yet, but I really mm-hmm. like taking six just for... I either like taking six for 120 points mm-hmm. or five and then give the Exarch two... The uh, upgrade him for 10 points for two guns. Yeah. So he's 110 points. So I like keeping him fairly cheap, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I, nice uh, little tech piece that can deal with some chaff units, like. And it, honestly, they can deal with like uh, heavier stuff too. Mm-hmm. That eight, that strength six and AP two is nothing to. That's at. true. Right? Like even if they're not fighting units that like bring out the best of their blast ability, like just having D six or D six plus one shots into something is right. Nothing to sneeze at, and especially just with the. Uh, the move six inches after charge mm-hmm. like the shenanigans that opens up is awesome yeah it can like if you do pre-measuring right you're gonna make your opponent's life very difficult to get on some objectives mm-hmm. all right now moving on to one of my personal favorite i mean they're all my favorite but <laughs> they're also they're cool. all really cool the shining spears man i love shining spears so these these changed in a couple way, different ways as well so they are now three attacks base, four for the Exarch. So they got an extra attack, which is mm-hmm. much needed for combat. Yeah. Um, and their laser lances changed as well, Zach. They're, in shooting, they're the same. They're one shot, strength six, AP four, two damage. Mm-hmm. But in combat now, they're a base plus one strength. So they're base four strength, AP four, two damage. And then if you charge, they're now strength six. Not it used bad. to be their strength user. So if you got charged with them, they sucked. Mm-hmm. But now they're at least strength four, which makes a huge difference. Still put out some hurt. Yeah. And um, they lost the four up invulnerable in the shooting phase. So now, But they replaced that with five up all the time. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Because now they're also minus one to hit all the time, too. Yeah. So instead of being four up invulnerable and shooting, 
you're now minus one to hit all the time, and you have a five up in combat, and still shooting. So like I, I'll overall, take it. Overall, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, overall, I'll take it in a heartbeat. But uh, yeah, that's I think most of the changes. Let's uh, hop on over to those Exar <laughs> trades. You want to take over the first one? Yeah. So the first one is a twenty point upgrade for expert lancers. Uh, in the fight phase, each time a model in this unit makes an attack, if this unit made a charge move this turn and contains a Shining Spear Exarch model, add one to the attack's hit roll. So now you got plus one to hit. At strength six, was it AP... Uh, AP four. AP four, two damage. Mm-hmm. Not bad at all. Right. I, I really like this for the bigger units. Yeah. Get the most bang for your buck. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's strong. Hitting on twos is strong. Oh, yeah. Like, just to have that all the time on the charge. I mean, with my warriors, I'm spending a CP to get plus one to hit in combat. Mm-hmm. Like, just to have it as a 20-point upgrade. Right. Pretty good. Not bad. Because now that Exarch 2 is five attacks. Mm-hmm. Hitting on twos, <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, shit, yeah, that's still like 13 attacks for a minimum unit of three. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. And you can give the Exarch the, uh, the, the upgraded lance, so it's strength mm. eight now on the charge. Oof. That's... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they now still put spicy. out some hurt. Now we're getting spicy. Uh, the next upgrade is one that a lot of people have been going for, is Heart Strike. Each time this unit's uh, Shining Spear Exarch model makes a melee attack on an unmodified wound roll of five, it inflicts one mortal in addition to any damage. Well, I like that. It sounds pretty good, but here's where uh, here's the little wombo combo that people have been running with it. They take the Paragon Lance, and the Paragon, mm-hmm. instead of the normal Lance, so it's free, and the Paragon Lance is strength four... AP AP three doesn't really matter one damage, mm-hmm. but you reroll all hits and wound rolls. Okay, now you're seeing. So it's five attacks, mm. rerolling hit rolls, rerolling wound rolls. So you're just fishing for fishing that. Fishing for fives. Fishing for fives, trying to do th- like round three mortals, something tougher. I like that. It's pretty good. Not pretty bad good. at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I I haven't tried it yet, but I'm I'm meaning to in the next game. Ooh, ah, okay. yeah. Something to look out for then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I like that one a lot. Uh, So then we have, for 20 points, Lightning Attack. Uh, Each time this unit makes a consolidation move, if it contains a Shining Spear Exarch model, it can move an additional 6. That's an additional 6, so you're consolidating 9. Consolidating 9. That's not bad at all. I do like that. Anytime you get extra movement, you've you've got my interest peaked. Right. Is it worth 20 points? Eh, maybe if you have a plan for it. I, my plan, I haven't tried it yet, but my plan would be to give them obsec, either through the psychic oh, okay. power or um, potentially taking a craft roll, mm-hmm. Atlantisar, through the White Dwarf supplement, and then giving them the obsec through that. I could see that being Kill really something easy and then consolidate nine inches onto something your opponent mm-hmm. thought was safe. I like that a lot. That's my like little tech piece. I haven't tried it yet. Don't know how good it is, but I'm sure it's fun. Especially because uh, in our last game, you were running the Farseer with Obsec, like the Farseer on Jet Bike with yeah. Obsec. Uh, even pairing that with the, uh, as having two super fast Obsec units on bikes. Mm-hmm. I like that as a little tech piece. Yeah, moving, cons- consolidating nine is no joke. People don't expect it. <laughs> that's a that's far, man. Nine inches. It's a big consolidate move. Yeah. Might be one of the biggest in the game. Honestly, though, I, them and Hormigons, mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah, really I think, think that's of... it. Like, yeah, yeah. So that's and Hormigons, you got to take like a specific hive fleet and everything to get them up to nine. Gear them up a little bit. Mm-hmm. But now, uh, now we're gonna move on to yet another personal favorite, <laughs> the Howling Banshees. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, how I love the Howling Banshees, and they have changed for the better. They also now have an additional attack from last time, so they're sitting at three attacks base. Four for the Exarch. That's spicy. Not bad. Um, And the Howling Banshee mask is just as good as it was before. It's, um, you cannot fire Overwatch when you select as a target. And it's even better because now you make a unit fight last when you charge it. Mm -hmm. So not only can you not Overwatch, you're also fighting last. Yeah, I like that a lot. And auto fight last like this is just awesome. Just make it, make it, make your uh, multiple charge targets of charges. I can't, I can't speak, <laughs> can't speak right now. But uh, makes it a lot easier mm-hmm. when you're charging multiple things because mm-hmm. if things are fighting last, you don't have to worry about interrupts typically. Right. So 
Yeah, that's real good. Um, and they also have, when you charge, you get plus one to wound. That's not bad at all. That's real good. So they're they're sitting with the strength four um, power swords. You know, strength four, AP three, one damage. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Not bad. Um, and then the uh, they also... What is this? Each time an attack is made against this unit... Uh, you know, you just subtract one from the hit roll. Okay, okay. It's minus one to hit, eh? Yeah, just minus one to hit. That's pretty good. Is they're acrobatic, <laughs> and they can also advance oh, and, and charge. And they, charge. They, yep, they kept that. So they good. did. They did lose. They used to have like a plus two to, to uh, charge, mm-hmm. just all the time. But I'll take this over that because strands of fate kind of make up for that. So right after after my gene stealers lost their advance and charge, if the the leaks are accurate. Oh, I hope you enjoy your advance and charge access. Oh, but I will, Zach. <laughs> that feels good. Advance and charge is super mm-hmm. powerful. Oh yeah. And and in the our game, using the six on the strands of fate for auto six advance, and then six plus d d six for the charge. Mm-hmm. These girls move fast. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah, they move real fast. Do you want to go over the uh, first of the upgrades, Zach? Yes, indeed. So we got uh, Graceful Avoidance for 20 points. I love these names so much. They're very good. Uh, I'm going to keep saying that, but... <laughs> That's true. It's, it's true. They're so cool and thematic. Uh, so while this unit contains a Howling Banshee Exarch model, models in this unit have a 4-up and vulnerable save against melee attacks. That's not bad at all. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's where they want to be. <laughs> keep in mind the negative one to hit, too. Yeah, it's right. Looking pretty good. Uh, the next one is Nerve Shredding Shriek. Now that's a name you that's can get behind. So cool. That's really cool. <laughs> it is 10 points, so pretty cheap. One of the cheaper ones. Each time this unit finishes a charge move, you can select one enemy unit within an engagement range of this unit's Howling Banshee Exarch model and roll 1d6 on a 2+, plus. that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. And until the end of the turn, subtract one from combat attrition text. tests. Not bad. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, ten points. That's mm-hmm. that's fairly cheap because you're you're like I said before, ten points for that, but you're also getting plus one attack and an extra mm-hmm. wound. So like for that, it's pretty good value. Right. Uh, next up, we have fifteen points for piercing strikes. Add one to the damage characteristic of melee attacks made by this unit's exarch. That's not bad at all. You want to know the wombo combo, Zach? I, I, always. So the mirror sword swords are basically. Just the same profile as a uh, normal power sword. Mm-hmm. So, you know, strength four, AP three, one damage. One damage. Oh, okay. But they make two additional attacks instead of one. Okay. With the extra attack, this if you take this, this Banshee Exarch is making ten attacks Oof. with two damage. <laughs> that's Ooh, not bad at all. That's, pretty, that's like a mini succubus. It really is. That's... Little that's, baby true master. <laughs> right? That's super cool. <laughs> Now you got like a melee, like a little mini character blender. So Dude, I, I love that one. Closer to a solitaire, honestly. Yeah, like, it's not bad super good. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I love Howling Banshees, man. Very cool. They're they're one of my favorite. They're, I think they were, mm. if you don't count Dire Avengers, which is, they're aspects, but to me, I'm like, they're the troops. Like, <laughs> right. Howling Banshees were my first like real dive into the, ex- into the aspects. Mm-hmm. And I love them. I love them so much. The next one is the Striking Scorpion, Zach. It's so cool. You, no, these are probably my I favorite think, aspects. I, yeah, I was waiting for this. Like, you love the Striking Scorpions. I love scorpions. Striking Scorpions so much. And they were they were kind of garbage trash in the last book. Like, you could do <laughs> yeah. actions with them, but you weren't killing much. Now you're killing stuff. Yeah. Um, these bad boys, huge overhaul for the better. So they have three attacks, like most combat things now three attacks mm-hmm. exarch has four already starting off good the uh the regular scorpion's chain sword is now strength five ap one one damage okay but it also gets an extra attack so each boy is making four attacks that's not bad sounding pretty good isn't it pretty spicy oh but wait there's more um each time you roll a six to hit in combat it generates an additional hit okay Sounds pretty good. All right, all right. Baked in exploding sixes. Baked in exploding sixes. And then each time the bear makes a melee attack that targets a unit, except for vehicle or monsters, an unmodified wound roll of six does one mortal wound in addition. All right. So now you're making 
four attacks, six is to hit explode, six is to wound do an additional <laughs> mortal. Okay. But the it is important to note the additional hits you get from exploding do not get the mortal benefit. Mm-hmm. So these things are good. Not like, bad at all. Talk about the chaff clearing like they should be. <laughs> they're they're munching hormigons. They will pick up yeah, pretty much anything. It's not vehicle or monster. Like they're they're munching. Some of the uh we'll, we'll go over some of the uh point upgrades now. Alright, you taking the first one? I'll take the first one, the old crushing blows. So this one's fifteen points. Each time this unit striking Scorpion Exarch model makes a melee attack that targets a non Titanic unit. If a hit is scored, that attack automatically wounds the target. I don't hate that. I like that. That's five attacks doing that. Pretty good. Uh, and then we have Deadly Ambush for 20 points. While this unit contains a striking Scorpion Exarch model and is wholly within an area terrain feature, each time a melee attack is made by a model in this unit, add one to that attack's hit roll and improve the armor penetration characteristic by one. Not bad. Not too bad. Not too bad kind of thematic going for things in cover coming out of the cover right. attacking it's yep pretty cool they're like the shock troops that come in silently and then butcher a unit and then disappear into the shadows right i Ugh. love it oh love striking scorpions so cool. the last one scorpion sting each t- uh each time this unit is selected to fight if that unit contains a an exarc model until the fight is resolved replace the exarc model's mana blaster rule with the following each time the bearer makes a melee attack that targets a non-vehicle unit, so excludes the monster thing. Hmm. Interesting. An unmodified wound roll of 5 plus inflicts one mortal in a, on the target in addition to normal damage. Not bad. Not too bad. It is 30 points, though, which it's is... It's expensive. It's expensive, yeah. Uh, my fa- my personal favorite here is Crushing Blows. The If you score a hit, you automatically wound. Yeah. For fifteen points, the cheapest one too. Right, so you got, you guys got five attacks. I like to com I like to combo this one with the uh, the little relic you can give Exarchs. Not many of the relics are good, but I really like this one out of all of them. Uh, this one replaces the biting blade, and it is strength plus three, so it's strength seven or no strength six. Sorry, strength six, AP two, two damage, but you make two additional attacks with the weapon. So now mm. this Exarch is making 10 attacks at strength 6, <laughs> AP 2, 2 damage, and they automatic, if it hits, it wounds. Okay, yeah. That's, that's to get pretty a good, spicy. isn't it? You got some pretty cool character, or like mini characters with this. Yeah. Almost better than some of the melee characters you can take. For real. Like, like <laughs> it's, I really enjoy the Striking Scorpions. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping they get uh, new models in the next wave. I'll be buying 10 of them. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If you get, like, cool Predator-looking... Right, yeah. Like, if they get an update, I will be buying a bunch of Striking Scorpions. Like, um, especially of Karandras. Man, Karandras hmm. leaves a little bit to, to be... Desi- he's a little... He's showing his age a little bit. He's a little stumpy-looking, a little 2D. <laughs> he's, like. he's a little gumpy-looking. I mean, he's he's old. He's old, yeah, he's old. He's old. Um, so the next one, pour one out. Put an F in the chat. <sighs> yeah. It's the Dark Reapers. Uh, we won't have a whole lot to say. I don't want to be too negative on these <sighs> bad boys because the sculpts are so fantastic. Mm-hmm. Sue me. Some it's a little people were divided on it. I think they're cool. I dig them. I I, I love like all the new sculpts. I'm like, this is what I'd want out of a new sculpt. They're not redesigning the wheel. You mm-hmm. know, I think they're good. They updated a classic is what they did. Right. So. They've changed in multiple ways. So now you can only take them in units of five. No more, no less. Um, the unit just kind of is what it is. You just have one Dark Reaper Exarch, and you have four Dark Reapers. Okay? Not, you know, okay, we're trucking, we're trucking. Uh, the weapon stayed the same. So it's strength eight. It's one. Sh- it's either one, the Reaper launcher is either one shot, heavy one, strength eight, AP two, three damage, or two shots, strength five, AP two, two damage. And they've also changed because they no longer always hit on threes. Yeah. Sad, sad. Now it's changed to uh, you ignore dense cover, which, you know, it's not bad. But the biggest problem is these weapons are heavy, Zach. Mm -hmm. So if you move, you're taking a penalty. And if you're not moving and you're still shooting at something, you're getting shot with your little T3 one wound body. Yeah, it means you have to leave them out in the open or take the penalty. And 
Yeah, and being <sighs> that these bad boys are 150 minimum for mm. the unit, it's a pricey thing when you look at like a fire prism and what yeah. that can give you, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that. We can we'll go over the uh, the old Dark Reaper uh, Exarch traits. You want to kick yeah. this bad boy off? All right. Well, we'll see what they got. Well, well yeah. Let's see. Got. You know, maybe maybe they'll change my mind right here. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So for 25 points, Bringer of Death. Uh, it's a two-pointer, so the first point is if this unit's Dark Reaper Exarch model is equipped with a Reaper Launcher or Shuriken Cannon, each time that model selected to shoot, it makes one additional attack with that weapon. Not bad. Uh, if this unit's Dark Reaper Exarch model is equipped with an Eldari Missile Launcher or Tempest Launcher, each time that model makes a ranged attack, target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. Not bad. It's... 25 they're, points. They're already ignoring dense cover, and your AP's pretty high, so, like, ignoring cover's not huge. I, I guess, looking at this one, I think I like this better if you're taking, like, a Tempest launcher, and you're shooting out a line of sight. Mm -hmm. You're upgraded, so you're hitting on twos, not moving, and you get you ignore cover on an AP2 indirect. Yeah, I don't hate that. I don't hate that, but I also don't hate the next one, which is Focused Fire. It's 15 <laughs> points. Each time this unit's Dark Reaper Exarch model makes a ranged attack, add one to the wound roll. Yeah. I think I like this one better. Even I, for the indirect, like, this is... Yep. Plus one to wound, solid. Plus one to wound's real solid. And then the next and very last one, Zach. Oh, yeah. So for 15 points, we get Reaper's Reach. I uh, love this. I love that. That name is really great. cool. great. <laughs> uh, while this unit contains a Dark Reaper Exarch model, models in this unit do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls in case incurred for firing heavy weapons in the same turn... Uh, that their unit has moved. Okay, so for 15 points, you get Auto. to ignore the heavy. You might yeah. as well just say if you're taking a unit of Dark Reapers, it's 165 because you're taking this. Yeah, you will be taking this. Like It's too it. good. You need it. You need to be hitting on threes, ignoring dents, to even think about taking Dark Reapers, honestly. Right, like the plus one to wound is a nice gimmick, but it's only on the X arc. And like, yeah, being able to ignore the heavy penalty for moving is insanely good. Right, and then like, I've been trying to think of ways to make them work because I love Dark Reapers. Yeah. So, like, I'm thinking, like, you, you pair him with an Autark in the backfield that's shooting its own Reaper launcher, and then you you have this on there, and now they're hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. Mm -hmm. If you're all the way re-rolling re one wound roll, okay. Not bad, not, not bad. bad. But then you have to, you either have to cut insane angles where you're not getting shot back from far away, mm -hmm. which is possible, but hard. Or you're firing fading, which is, in that case is costing two CP, which you yeah. don't love. They're a decent point sink to, like, try and make, force them to be decent. Mm -hmm. Like, one problem I have is with units, like, whether it's this or, like, three um, war walkers with, like, bright lances fire and fading away. I don't like building in units that need to fire and fade because I find loving the play where you use fire and fade to steal an objective mm -hmm. or get an engage or something. I love having that utility, and it, granted, now you have battle focus, so that's nice, but... These guys don't have battle focus, so they can't take advantage of the ones. It sucks. Yeah, yeah it sucks. Yeah. So all in all, I think they're usable if you really love them. Mm -hmm. Like I'm probably gonna take them just to try and make them work sometimes, but they're not what they were. I think they deserve battle focus. I think yeah, I think they could take battle focus, and I think I think they they had one too many nerfs. I mm -hmm. get they were really good before, but I think if they're the way they are now, I would like to see you be able to take ten of them in a squad. Mm -hmm. so you can you know throw a bunch of buffs at them and make like guide worth it for them yeah or keep them at five only and then give them back the always hit on threes yeah. i think either one of those would have been fine but they took both... a lot of nerfs all at once yeah which you hate to see especially for a new sculpt it's like gw right. didn't you want to sell this <laughs> yeah puts to bed some of the like uh oh the, all the new sculpts are good well not all of them you know i thought i used to think that mm -hmm. and then i kind of realized i'm like wait Howling Banshees are trash when they were released. Jane's R was trash. <laughs> this is trash. And I think of all the marine stuff, like the new land... Do you even know what the new land... Like the Primaris land speeders are? Of course not. No. <laughs> or the new, like, gladiator tank? No one's mm. even seen that. I've seen it once when it first came out, and I think that's just because, like, someone thought it looked cool. Yeah. And I haven't seen them since. You've never seen them since, so... Mm. I don't necessarily believe in that rumor. Yeah. <laughs> but I do believe in the new Codex thing. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Ten, unless you're GSC. Oh. <laughs> you know what? They were balanced. They were it's good. Just that actually, everything else is fucking. I actually crazy. think GSC is a really good book. Yeah. Like okay. I, 
if I want, like, I want Eldar, I wanted Eldar to be that power level. Able mm-hmm. to compete, but not, like, oppressive. Yeah. But here we are. <laughs> <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, we got repressive. Yeah. Um, uh, we we're got oppressive. oppressive. <laughs> we're oppressors. <laughs> the next one is uh, Fighter yeah. Dragons. Um, Fire Dragons, these bad boys, have changed in a couple ways. Um, every aspect has plus one attack. I think I've said that every time, and also said mm-hmm. that multiple times. <laughs> but I'll keep saying it. Um, the The Dragon Fusion Gun is still range 12, still Assault 1. Strength 9, AP 4, D6 plus 2. Pretty sweet. And then the Fire Pike is same range, 18, Assault 1 again. Strength 9, AP 4, D6 plus 4 for this bad boy. And that's the gun that mm-hmm. Exarch has. Love that. Still, you're rerolling rune rolls of 1 when you target a vehicle or monster. Fluffy and awesome. Same thing. Um, yeah, I mean, so people made a... They kind of made a big deal about... Uh, these fusion guns always being in melter range because they're always d6 plus two but then you go wait they're only ever always because they're 12 inches right they have half the range of a normal yeah they have they have half the range so it's like wait but they're always in half (laughs) so i'm like i don't i was wondering if you're gonna point that out (laughs) yeah i was like like, okay i mean like don't get me wrong i like them being assault over heavy i'll take honestly i'll i might even take the short range over the long range because well, maybe not with Eldar, but like I know with sisters, like when I get out and move, and now I'm hitting on fours with Meltas, mm-hmm. that feels bad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the uh, the point upgrades now, Zach. Yeah. So the the first one is twenty points for Blazing Fury. Uh, while this unit contains a Fire Dragon Exarch model, add four inches to the range characteristic of ranged weapons models in this unit are equipped with not bad pretty good pumping you up to a 16 inch range 16 inch range is pretty now, not bad now you're in a range where you can get in range and then fire and fade away to safety mm-hmm. now i'm thinking about it and you're still melt all the time yes and you're still not melt bad. all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad I, yeah i like this that's a very solid any upgrade. any of these upgrades that does something for the entire unit Mm-hmm. deserves to be looked at because now you're not just paying for the exarch it's kind of like the 20 yeah. points can be dispersed to every model yeah and like yeah and, uh, if you look at it as a model per model upgrades four points per model to give yeah. them an additional four inch range that's or really five or you know if you need a 10 if you're ballsy mm-hmm. it's only two points yeah really yeah the so the more you, more you got in the unit the more affordable it becomes yeah the next one is burning heat cool name Hmm. While this unit contains a Fire Dragon Exarch model, each time a model in this unit makes a range attack that targets a unit within 9 inches, if a hit is scored, that attack automatically wounds the target. I wish this could either be combined with Blazing Fury, yep. or it was not 9 inches because <laughs> Deep Strike. Mm, right, yeah, if it was a 10 inch, you mm-hmm. get in there from Deep Strike. Yeah, so, I mean, this one's cool. I mean, you can still, like, do some shenanigans, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. you're still Eldar, so you can still advance and shoot these bad boys without penalty. So, you can still get out of, like, a transport, advance Mm -hmm. up. If you have a Strands of Fate die, you could be moving 7 plus a flat 6 for 13 inches if you're within 9. Yeah. It's play, but... Take over the last one. Yeah, so lastly, we got the 15-point upgrade, Dragon's Bite. Uh, Each time this unit's Fire Dragon Exarch model makes a ranged attack that targets a vehicle or monster unit that is within half range when this unit is selected to shoot. If that attack is made with a Dragon Fusion Gun or Fire Pike, add 2 to the damage characteristic of that attack. If that attack is made with a Dragon's Breath Flamer, add 1 to the damage characteristic of that attack. And when resolving that attack, you can reroll the wound roll. Oh, on your fire pike, add two, so what do you, d6 plus four damage? I don't hate that. <laughs> oh, no, Zach. If you're within half, the fire pike is d6 plus six. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, that's we'll pull that really bad boy not up. bad. Yeah, so the fire pike is already d6 plus four. Oh. Oh, so that's, you have to be within half, so you have mm-hmm. to be within nine inches, right? But D six plus six, and you're you know you're rerolling wound rolls of one. You're fire dragon, so this upgrade lets you hit on twos. That could kill a hive tyrant in one go. That could just <laughs> one shot. They have twelve wounds. 
Yeah, the Flyrant and I believe Swarmy. Oh, wow. I I know the. I think the uh, the Walking Tyrant gets an additional wound up to thirteen. That would make sense. Yeah, but Tough I know the Flyrant is twelve. <laughs> one shot of flyer okay that's pop a flyer yeah yeah so of these ones i can't decide which one i like i think i like the plus four inch range yeah. or i like dragon's bite with yeah. the fire pike i'd say those are my two favorites i think uh the plus four inch range blazing fury is probably my favorite just by a little bit yeah it's probably the best because the fire pike is 10 points so if you want to take i mean you probably want to take the fire pike it just gets expensive when you add mm-hmm. all these upgrades, you know? Yeah. But... Blazing Fury's given plus four range to the whole unit. Giving everything it's... to the unit. 16 inches is now a serious threat mm-hmm. range, especially with Eldar movement shenanigans. Oh, yeah. And even if you're just moving six inches normally, what do they move? Six or seven? Seven, maybe. Seven, yeah. So you're, you got a 23-inch range if you just move straight at your target. Yeah. It's not bad. Not too bad at all. The... Now, the last unit, Zach, the last aspect we'll be going over is the... <laughs> the, the Hawks of Swooping. The Swooping Hawks. Now, I'm giving it dramatic entrance, not only to stall, but because <laughs> it is a great unit. What yeah, a glow. They're amazing. These guys are awesome. I mean, the balance update's coming by the time you hear this, this week. Um, <laughs> so, they might get nerfed. I kind of expect them to get nerfed, but we're going to go over them anyway. So these bad boys are basically the same sat line, like for the unit, but plus one attack. Uh, they, But the guns have changed, so the guns are now plus one strength. So they were strength three, AP zero, one damage. Now they're still assault four, 24 inches, strength four, AP zero, one damage. So that's the same. But now they automatically wound on a hit roll of six. Okay. And they're strength four instead of strength mm-hmm. three. So that's... Big, already huge, big glow up there. Um, the Hawk's Talon is strength four, AP, uh, or assault four, strength five, AP one, and same thing, but you probably aren't really going to take that. But the real sauce comes from the Sky Leap rule these bad boys have. So the Sky Leap rule is in the shooting phase, instead of making a battle focus move, you pick these guys up that same turn and you redeploy them. Yep. <laughs> that is... I remember, like, when we played our game, you're like, wait, what? They they can do what? <laughs> they just move... Okay. That seems good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of battle focus, just redeploy them. Just redeploy it. Because, yeah. I mean, the gun's 24. They move 14. So if you're within 38, this unit's coming up, shooting, and moving away. Mm-hmm. And hiding back in cover. Yeah. Talk good about... Good luck retaliating. T- it's... It might be a little strong. I I might see I might I wouldn't be surprised to see this move to once per game. Yeah, honestly, it probably what it should be. As fun as it is, it's like it <laughs> probably should be once per game. It's, but uh, yeah, we'll go over the uh, the sweet point upgrades. Yeah, you taking the first one? I'll take the rapid redeployment one. So this one is uh, while this unit contains a swooping hawk exerc model, it is eligible to shoot in a turn in which it fell back. It is twenty points and it is not going to be taken. Ha ha. Because like yeah, I mean if, if these guys are in combat, a you've done something wrong or you're losing or they're dead. They're not any of those survive three. through combat to no. fall back and shoot. No, they shouldn't. Especially be. not to have any meaningful shooting afterwards. No. And you know, even if this were the case, you have a one CP strat to do this. Yeah. So it's like when the situation comes up, you just pay for it. You don't need to pay for this in the list building stage. When it probably won't even come up. <laughs> when it, yeah, when it mm-hmm. no, never will come up. But the next one, Zach, is actually pretty decent. I'll let you take it. Yeah, so for 15 points, we have Suppressing Fire. In your shooting phase, after this unit has shot, you can select one enemy unit that was the target of a ranged attack made by this unit's Swooping Hawk Exarch model this phase and roll 3d6. If the result is greater than that enemy unit's leadership characteristic, until the start of your next shooting phase, that enemy unit cannot fire Overwatch, set to, to set to defend, or perform any actions. If that unit was performing an action, that action immediately fails. That one's pretty spicy. I like this one a lot. Mm-hmm. If you have a, you know, one of the missions has a unit or a tertiary where you start it in your turn, it completes at the end of your turn, mm-hmm. or at the start of your next turn, this is pretty good for saying, ah, none of that. Yeah, it's uh, also good if you see a unit your opponent, you know your opponent wants to rod with or R and D with, 
No, no, no. Dude, I was just thinking, because uh, I can fling out, like, slingshot a unit of gargoyles up to perform actions. If you know I'm expecting to do that and don't have, like, the angles to kill the, the gargoyles, just get that in there. Do you know how easy it is to beat a leadership of five on 3d6? <laughs> uh, it's basically every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could say that, see that being a huge problem with some of my Tyranid lists. I've yeah, been I, I took this... I, I probably still take this. I do like the next one, but man, I mean, j- just the action thing alone, but also mm-hmm. like just denying Overwatch. Like, right? I mean, you can't count on it because it's three d six leadership. A lot of stuff's leadership eight, but like, just another thing. It's another tool you can have in your tool belt. And Eldar yeah. love being in, having tons of different tools. I mean, even if I'm bringing like an acid spray Carnifex, I'm for sure Overwatching with that. Yeah, with and the if, auto hits. And like, I can't imagine that thing's leadership is too high. <laughs> it's six or seven, I want to say at <laughs> yeah, best. So three d six, you probably should get it. Mm-hmm. I think three d six, the average is getting like nine or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, and if it's something big like that, like let's say a Carnifex, it just says Exarch. It doesn't say unit. So you can mm-hmm. shoot your unit at things it wants to shoot, then just shoot the Exarch at the the thing it wants to deny overwatch yep so it's pretty good i like that the next one is winged evasion this bad boy is also 15 points and as each time this unit is selected as a target of a ranged attack if it contains a swooping hawk exarch you subtract one from the attack's hit roll not bad pretty good uh i'll also mention probably the next my next favorite uh relic that you can buy for exarchs it is the phoenix plume you give it to an exarch Bear has a four up invulnerable, and then it gives the unit a five up feel no pain. Ooh! So some people, what they've been doing is they take a you know big unit of ten of these bad boys, mm-hmm. hundred eighty points plus the point upgrades. So now this is like looking at while we stand territory. Okay. Now it's minus one to hit with a five up feel no pain, and you're getting you're getting it out of dodge. So you're moving it. It should the only thing that it should be shooting is indirect. Mm-hmm. Now you have a real survivable to the last that's not really being able... You can't interact with it. It's just I like that you. a lot. So yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. Yeah, a little trick. A little tricksies. <laughs> what Eldar are known for. Mm-hmm. Um, that is the last of the, um, the Exarch stuff. Um, what do you think? What do you, what do you think of the Exarch like, stuff? Overall, I think it's really cool. A lot of the, like, uh, the rules are flavorful. Um, we've been saying that a while now is like these recent ninth ed books have been doing wonders at like capturing the flavor of an army. Um, yeah, like it, it's just so cool. And a lot of them are really useful for like 15 to 20, 25 points. Right. Like initially, I mean, I thought the book was strong, but I saw some of these. I'm like, ah, I don't know. But then I, you know, I forgot that you get an extra wound or an extra attack and an extra attack or extra ballistic skill. Like that makes a big difference to the, the mm-hmm. cost of these point upgrades. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's little bonuses within bonuses. Yeah. And I, man, I love the combat ones, especially man, the, the shining spears and the <laughs> scorpions and the banshees. Mm-hmm. So even, cool. Like, looking at the points cost, like they're costed very similar to like the Harlequin specific, the Tau specific, and even the Tyranids are very similar in cost to these. We don't get bonuses to attacks and wo- or like wounds and everything just for taking set upgrades, which is really cool, right? Like the a lot of these guys will end up being around forty ish, sometimes even fifty ish points for you know T three couple wound body, but they come like a little mini character with like the unit that's protecting that one character. Like for the Howling Banshees, yeah. you only really care about that piercing strike girl that has mm-hmm. ten attacks at two damage. Right, everything like, else is kind of bonus. <laughs> yeah, everything else is just like almost bonus wounds to tank for that girl. So I, th- I don't know. I think it's really cool. It, it used yeah. to kind of be like in the last book, Exarchs were just you just took wounds on it because that's they didn't do anything really. Right, they had an extra attack and that's it. Like mm-hmm. a lot of times you're just taking wounds on the Exarch just to s- keep the units to survive. They were really exciting, like powerful, like yeah, leaders of the shrine, like as right. they should be, you know. And now it's like now, now they're fearsome. Oh, yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Black Templars had upgrades for their, like, sergeants and stuff to Mm -hmm. make their sergeants, like, mini characters. And this is kind of cool because it's, like, the same thing. Yeah. Makes your, like, exarchs or sergeants feel like mini characters like they should be. Right. I love it. Yeah, it's very fun. Very thematic. Very. Now we're gonna now we're gonna go over some of the just some of the data sheets that we like, some other things we like in the book, and just kind of give our lasting our last little thoughts. Yeah, and we'll stand out options and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to, to kick things off here in regards to data sheets, 
Uh, how can we not start with the Avatar of Cain? Oh, the Avatar of Cain. First, the new model's out. <sighs> the new model is so amazing. Like, compare it to the old resin one. Mm-hmm. Night and day. I, I will be magnetizing the head and weapon options. I will find a way to do it. They're purely cosmetic, but they just look so cool. <laughs> is it is it going to be the first model we ever just magnetize purely for cosmetic? I think it is. And yeah. Deservedly so, man. These heads and the sword and the spear and the axe like i don't know i don't know if i want to run the classic head with the classic sword or the roman head with the spear i even kind of like the elf looking head like i never thought i'd like a helmetless head like this right like what (sighs) the heck and i'm a sucker for a good axe you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like and in lore the avatar of kane does like use an axe often but there's never been a model representing that and yeah in the lore too like magnetizing is cool because like in the lore the weapons are like ever changing like it mm-hmm. changes based on what the avatar needs i love that like, you know for range it changes at the spear and then it'll change to the sword like it's awesome dude the wailing doom the wailing doom indeed it's so cool and not just not just did the model get an upgrade the data sheet got an upgrade huge oh it's scary now man and it's it's priced to sell i think it's mm-hmm. it's priced at 270 so it's not bad it's perfectly priced. I was worried this bad boy would be like 400 points and just mm-hmm. be kind of like, oh, you take it for fun games. 270, I'd take this in a competitive game. Oh, yeah. And I don't like usually like big expensive models. And mm. I'd take this bad boy in a heartbeat. It's like some uh, some big changes. I mean, he's strength 7, T8 now. Yep. 14 wounds, 7 14 attacks. 14 wounds, yep. 2 up save. Um, yeah. He halves damage. <laughs> Four up invulnerable save, like. So yeah, just give this oh. T eight two up four up half damage. That's a defensive profile <laughs> right there. That's some. That's a mean tough that's cookie crazy. right there. That's a tough customer. Oh man. Even if they roll an eight on melta damage, like you could save it on a fifty fifty, and then yep. even if it goes through, you're only taking four damage. Yep. Like, oh even, god. Even the the scary hammerhead. Mm-hmm. You're only taking five damage and then three mortals, right? Like you're still surviving that. <laughs> and I'd be, it'd be a criminal thing not to say you're pairing this with fortune. You're giving yeah. the avatar fortune yeah. for a five up feel no pain. Yeah, most certainly. Oh, you yeah. have to. You have to. I'm pretty sure he's got access to fight on death strats. Yep, he has a fight on death strat. He explodes, which he is explodes. fun. Explodes. Uh, six inch explosion for D three. Kind of yes. cool. Give give us the give us the damage. Oh man. Okay. So he's got two profiles for his wailing doom. I've just got three technically. So <laughs> the shooting profile is range twelve, assault one, strength twelve, AP four, damage D six plus two. Uh, each time an attack is made with this weapon, this is so cool. If a hit is scored, draw a straight line between the closest point to the bearer's base or hull and that of the closest model in the target unit. Make one wound roll against the target unit and each other unit this line passes over. That oh. is cool. He's just chucking that spear straight through everything. That's so awesome. It's a melta that melts through things. Like, yeah. That's so cool. Chain I, lightning. <laughs> I love that. I love those, like, mm-hmm. I know Mortarian has this, the, the uh, Void Dragon has it. I love these rules. They're so cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. Uh, and then in melee, he gets his piercing strike and sweep attack. So the sweep attack is strength user, so strength 7, AP 2, 2 damage, but it makes 2 hit rolls, or 2 hit attacks, yeah, instead of 1, so it's 14 attacks. Uh, at his top tier instead of seven and then you got the big attacks big so attacks. seven attacks at strength times two so strength 14 ap5 damage oh. d6 plus two. Oh my god oh, oh mama <laughs> there goes that man that is so cool and then uh the bloody handed aura so friendly azuriani core units within six of this model re-roll charges just good. Uh, and he's Azurani, so he just... Oh, is this a core? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But still, that's fun. He keeps that. He had something similar. Yeah, and then other... Yeah, and then he has another aura, Kane Awakened. So Azuriani core units within 12... Uh, 
Ignore any or all modifiers to combat attrition. That's nice. Any or all, yeah. That's pretty yeah, good. That's nice to have. Oh. Thematic, too. Like, your mm-hmm. warriors aren't getting... Like, they're becoming braver with the Avatar yeah, nearby. Right. Super cool. Uh, Avatar of the Bloody-Handed God. Model can never have a relic or warlord trait. Did he really need one? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. No, man. He's oh, so man. Good. And he still gets uh, craft roll traits. Yeah. So this bad boy, if he's a Andon, just ignore... He's two up, four up, ignoring AP1. Ooh. Or reducing AP2 to AP1. Like, yee. This is That's one... That's wild. One dur- yeah, like I said, though, you are comp- you are putting a five up, feel no pain on this man. Oh, yeah. You're taking a Farseer, and you're putting the five up, feel no pain on him every time. Like, no questions asked. That's what you're doing. Yep. Two up, four up, half damage, five up, feel no <sighs> pain is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Straight up just mm-hmm. God. I love him. I'll I'll be as soon as he's built, he's gonna be run. Right? You have to. You have to. Uh the next unit, we we're talking buffing with the Farseer. It's the Farseer. We have th- two different variants, and then we have Eldred Ulthran of uh Ulthway. He's the Eldrad Ulthran, the Eldar of Ulthway. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the Farseers are just awesome. Uh, I'll just kind of vaguely combine all these. Mm-hmm. But really, you're taking them for the powers because, man, the powers are so good. So good. You have, I mean, we didn't even mention this, but the Avatar of Cain. You can give the Avatar of Cain obsec with Will of Azirion because he's a core or character. Nice. So you can yeah. make the obsec avatar, okay. But, uh, like, the powers are fantastic. Uh, we kind of went over the powers in the last... Um, episode of the review but um the farseer has changed a little bit with their ghost helm rule they now no longer suffer perils instead of having that weird ignore peril wounds on a two up they just they're just like no no they're just not gonna suffer perils (laughs) and that's big too because there's a lot of like weird niche anti-psyker stuff that makes a unit suffer perils i think tyranids have something like this in their new book yeah there's something that says, hey, this is going to force perils on you. With mm-hmm. the new shadow on the warp, isn't that what? Or additional it's, D. Um, oh, yeah. Like, um, when you take perils, you suffer an additional wound if you're in shadow of the warp. And then there's a, a stratagem with, uh, is it Kronos? Yeah, the one that hate chaos. Yeah. Where it's like, if you take perils, like, and spend a CP, you suffer, like, an additional D3, and then any other psychers that fail a psychic test take mortals. Like, yeah. It's kind of cool. Like, sisters have, like, a, a stratagem to make, uh, mm-hmm. like, things perils, but, like, oh, my Farseer perils? Well, I don't suffer perils of the warp. You just negate that. It's so cool. Yeah. So it's super strong. Um, and, honestly, paired with Fate Dice, like, a lot of the psychic powers maintain the still high casting of seven, but combined, like if you take all three, you get plus one to your first cast. But also the fate dice, man, just a flat six for real. So strong. All of a sudden, these powers that were like 50 50, you might get, you might not. You're just kind of getting them now. Mm-hmm. So strong. Um, yeah, so Farseers, they're a vibe. They're a vibe. They're just a vibe. I mean, <laughs> they're solid. They're... Their, their stat lines don't matter too much because you're, you're not taking them for that. You're taking them because they're a vibe in the psychic phase. They're, they're the glue to your army. I think every army wants at least two. So I take three. Like, I, like, oh, and I, I'm just going to give this a little, uh, little cheddar, too. The uh, Eldritch Storm, the best orbital bombardment in the game. Three CP, it's that one where you pick a point within 24 inches of a Farseer mm-hmm. in your command phase. Then the Psychic phase, different Farseers can charge up that. So the, in the Psychic phase, after movement, other Farseers can move into range of that 20 four inches of that point and they can it's warp charge five action they can all charge up this point and then in your shooting phase so it can be mm-hmm. after you shoot things before you shoot things whatever you decide everything within six takes d3 mortals plus one for every farseer that charged up with the warp charge mm-hmm. of five so now you can like i take three so if i needed to i could do d3 plus potentially three mortals to everything within six of that do that's a that's insane. Damn. That's insane. That's what an orbital that's fun. bombardment that is. Like it's like the only good one in the game. <laughs> that's like oh, that's actually worth three CP. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's just shot some serious mortals. Hmm. Chef's kiss. <laughs> very good. Uh, the next one, 
I'm gonna let you take Zach. All right, all right. You're gonna take B for broken. B for broken. Baharoth. Baharoth. All right. So how many points is he? One forty. One forty. So for one forty points, you got. Weapon skill, bliss skill 2, 14 inch movement, strength toughness 4, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 9, 2 up save. With that 5 up invulnerable, that invulnerable, correct? Yep, and also can, uh, no, he has a 4 up. And then he all, oh, all yeah, Phoenix yeah. Lords have a 4 up, except yep. for Ajerman has a 3. <laughs> and then all Phoenix Lords also can only take a max of 3 wounds per phase. Nice. Sweet. So he can't die in one phase. Can't least. die in one phase. Uh, so then he has Fury of Tempest, 24 Assault 4, uh, Strength 6, AP 2, 2 damage, Unmodified Hit Rolls of 6, Automatically Wound, not bad. Pretty good. Uh, the Shining Blade is Strength 5, AP 3, 2 damage. Each time an attack is made with his weapon, Unmodified Hit Roll of 6, scores 1 additional hit, not bad. Pretty good. Uh, and then we have his rules, which are really where it gets give him the Give them the saw, Zach. Oh, so Cloud Strider... When this model consolidates or makes a battle focus move, you can instead remove this model from the battlefield and set it up again anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. This is when you battle focus or consolidate after fighting. Yep. Even if you're in combat, oh, I don't want to consolidate. I'll just redeploy. I'll just get out of here. Yep. Oh, you can charge something, fight it, and then just disappear. And then just dip. I love that so and much. Combined with him being obsec, as all Phoenix Lords are obsec, yep. and give their respective shrine obsec, he's good. He's just not gonna die. Some big plays with this guy. Like it, the damage he does isn't like fantastic. It's like oh, it's okay. But mm-hmm. the reason it's good is because you're doing it for five turns. He's not right. dying. Right. And he's a great late game piece for like when objectives start to get scarce or scarce. Not much around. You just boop. I'm taking this one over. I love his color scheme. He's very cool. You know, the model is kind of like Paper Mario. But, he's uh, very flat, very, very 2D. F- very 2D, very old, but uh, he's actually pretty cool. I'm excited for him to get an update because when it does, I think they're going to do him right. Yeah. He's going to look pretty sweet. He's got to look sweet. He's going to look pretty pretty sweet. And then lastly, he has an aura called Cry of the Wind. While a friendly Swooping Hawks unit is within six of this model, add two to the leadership characteristic models in that unit. And that unit has the obsec ability. Not bad. Uh, yep, and keep in mind, he's Swooping Hawk, so he's obsec. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so he's... That's uh, nice. You played against Baharoth once. How did you How did you feel about Baharoth? Ah, he's so irritating. Little silly. <laughs> <laughs> little silly. Little silly. Oh, man, he's just jumping around the board, fighting and shooting stuff, causing havoc, and then disappearing. Just being an annoying little rodent amazing tech piece really like, like yeah if you have baharoth take him and i i recommend building around the 140 point mm-hmm. point mark to be able to take him as a wall we stand because him being a wall we stand is crazy so hard to get to and kill like, you're I, if you play it right you're not gonna kill him right i i will say too a little tech piece against him if he's in combat at all interrupt against him and base him because then he can't leave you because mm-hmm. it's after he consolidates, and he if he's base, he can't consolidate. Ooh, so ba- base Baharoth. B for base. <laughs> uh, the next unit, I'm just going to go over uh, the old Wind Riders. I really like me some Wind Riders right now, um, as everyone does. <laughs> uh, so they got the Scatter Laser, Shuriken Cannon, Twin Shuriken Catapult, all of which got an upgrade. Every one of them. Twin Shuriken Catapult's now 18 inches, so you can actually shoot with it. It's awesome. And it's AP 1 now, so it's still Assault 4, Strength 4, AP 1, 1 damage. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, and what's cool with this is each time you make an attack uh, uh, an attack with the Twin Shirk and Catapult, if it, something is within range and objective marker, you reroll a hit a roll of 1. So if you take it with the cheapest option, which if you take the Twin Shirk and Catapult, it's 20 points per model. You're hitting on 3s, rerolling 1s. If, if you're shooting something on an objective, not bad. Uh, then the shuriken cannon got a glow up. It's now heavy three, strength six, AP one, two damage shuriken. Man, the two damage at, and the AP one adds so much to the, mm-hmm. so much. And then finally, uh, the scatter laser, my personal favorite, as is probably most people at this point. Thirty six inch range like it was, but it's now heavy six instead of four, strength six, AP zero, one damage. Not bad. Six shots, and these bad boys are tw- with the sh- with the scatter laser. Twenty five points per model. I like to take five. Hmm. One twenty five points gets you thirty shots at strength six, AP zero, one damage. 
You have strat different stratagems in here. There's one for guardian units to reroll hit rolls of one. That not doesn't have to be the the rule that they have. The swift demise. Mm -hmm. So now these bad boys can be hitting on threes rerolling ones, and they also the black guardians stratagem that Ulthway has. Hmm. So guardian units get a plus one to hit. Well, these are guardians, so now yeah. these bad boys can be hitting on twos. With 30 shots, strength 6, AP 0, 1 damage, combine it with Jinx to give something minus 1. Now we're talking. My termagants are shaking in their hooves. Oh, they're shaking. <laughs> like, I, the, ooh. I mean, because you're using these and you're either battle focusing, with you're either paying the 1 CP to battle focus 6, mm -hmm. or you're firing fading. Yeah. You're not letting these guys be shot, and if they're able to do this for 3 to 4 turns, that's kind of devastating for like little griblies. That adds up. Adds up big. So, I, I love these guys. Um, do you have any more units that you want to, that you, you in particular like? Oh, I think that mostly covers it. I, I mean, it's tough. Cause like this whole book is good. Yeah, like, like legitimately I, we could go over every unit. I know. I'm trying to pick out any standouts. It's like everything got a glow up. Everything is better. Everything got cool. Like janky Eldar rules. Like, right. like aspects are good again. Like, Right, that's I that's was so the biggest part. I, I I wanted mm -hmm. to cover the aspects because they're so good now. Aspects are amazing. The Avatar Kane is amazing. Right. Well, what more could you ask for? If, beyond that, everything else is bonus. <laughs> yeah, and everything else is legitimately B tier or better. Mm hmm. It's so good. And again, like the internal balance of these new books is crazy. Every unit in this book you could make an argument for. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I know that's what you want with Tyranids. Like, yep. how much fun is it being able to look at the entire book and be like, I could take this. I could take that. The whole book. Dude, I've never even wanted like a Tyrannocyte, like drop pod transport before for Tyranids. Now I want one. It's like ugh, everything in the book you can use. You can make an argument for it. It's mm -hmm. it's so fun because it, it, it lets you take more of like a... Instead of a spam list, you can take, mm -hmm. like, a one-of-everything list. Right. Like, I think the last list that I ran, other than Warlocks and Farseers, I don't think I, like, brought two of anything else. Mm -hmm. It was just one-of-everything, and that's, that's Feels fun. cool. And it, it, it's cool. You, you get to use, like, your whole collection. Right. It's, it's really not that much fun just throwing out 20 of the same thing. Right. Like, last... Last edition, Eldar, man, we didn't have a lot of options. It was, like, Dark Reapers, Shining Spears, and... Mm -hmm. go f yourself because that's it it was like it's not it's not fun having to spam so many of the same things it's nice when everything can be good and viable right because then you can make like weird off meta builds too you don't even have to like look at the net list even if the net list is super good because like wraith lords are great now too um it's like, and you got like this whole range of toys you want to play yeah, with. Like, right? You want to use them all. You don't want to like just have them collect dust for an addition, right? Like, people had a bunch of striking scorpions. Like, man, mm -hmm. you could. You're not doing much with those last edition. <laughs> no. Now you're you're loving it. Absolutely. Like they can put out some hurt. Right. Like, like I said, everything in this book is good. I I don't know that there's a bad unit. Even Dark Reapers. We we're memeing on them. Partly that's because of what they were before. Right. You could, like, I thought of ways, and I probably will take them. It's a little harder now because the indirect meta is so fierce <laughs> into, like, T3 bodies. Yeah. Really hurts, but I still think I'm going to try and take them just because, like, they're really cool. Mm -hmm. And I want to see if I can make them work, you know? I, I don't know if it, the way to do it is with going all in on the, the shots or going just putting them behind cover with the indirect. Mm -hmm. I don't really love that because it's, like... Why not just use another indirect option? Right, you have but, better indirect options. Right. But one as a tech piece might be kind of cool. Plus, that hooded Exarch. Oh. I know. I ha you have to do the hooded mm -hmm. Exarch. It's so cool. Like, yeah, is he cat ears? Yes. Is he that kid? Yes. But he's cool. <laughs> he's very so cool. So cool. I've even thought of, like, how expensive do you think it would be to, like, buy the bits and just have every model in the Dark Reaper unit with the hood? <laughs> like I thought about it, and then just putting like the top knot on like on the exarch, the exarch. Yeah. yeah. Like I love the hooded look. <laughs> so that's a good idea, actually. Get cat cat boy, <laughs> the cat boy unit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. I I just dig this whole book. I'm excited mm -hmm. to keep keep practicing with it. I mean, like right now, Althway's looking the best, but like, yeah. and it it pairs so nicely with what I love about Eldar is playing the psychic phase. 
Right. So it's hard for me to stray away from that because that <laughs> plus one to cast is so good. Mm-hmm. But I do want to try out like Beltan. They have that stratagem for just one CP shooting or combat. Sixes explode. Yeah. For aspects. Absolutely. Like, that's super good, dude. Put that with some Banshees. <laughs> right. Some Yodeling Banshees. Oof. Even Dark yeah. Reavers might might kind of sauce on that. And then they get that. Honestly. Beltan also has that uh, Chapter Master thing. So they can mm-hmm. make two units reroll hit rolls. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Not bad. And also Ayandan. Like, mm-hmm. dude, ignoring AP1, turning... Like, I want to run an all Wraith list, because that honestly seems pretty good. Like, with the right. buffs you can put on it? Mm-hmm. Put the, you have to put an Avatar in all Wraith list. Oh, absolutely. You have to. There's no there's no debate. Yeah. I know, like, uh, I got a message from Ben. He's like, <laughs> so I'm bringing nothing but Wraith, so what do I play? It's like, well, I, I mean, I and in Wraith. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you have to. Like, I and in? Yep. Even just thematically. Like... Yeah, even... Even without the <laughs> rules being good, have to do Ayanon. Right. But yeah, I think that's gonna wrap the book, wrap up uh, the the uh, I guess review of the Elder mm-hmm. Codex. Kind of put that to bed. Maybe we'll revisit like in a little bit. See kind of how they're doing yeah. in a couple weeks, months, or something. I'd like to talk to them or talk about them if they are addressed in the the balanced data slate. We'll probably talk about the data slate a lot in our next episode. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Hopefully, yeah. there's a lot to to cover on that too. Right. We'll see. It might just be a small part of it, but yeah, I definitely want to talk about it. Definitely. Um, potentially have an RTT coming up at the end of the month. Right. So I mean, if that's the case, probably be taking Eldar and let you know, guys know how <laughs> how that goes with what I'll what I'll take. Nice. Potentially, we take. I mean, I mean, might have to bring my Quins. It's not a super metal list, but the Quins are still good even without nine Void Weavers. Yeah, I mean, it Sky Weavers are even though they're not being taken. It's like, dude, I actually like they're like the new. Really I like the new Haywire. Yeah, like, I, love, I think the math is it's actually better versus vehicles. Yeah, like now. It, it looks bad at first because you're like, ooh, but then mm-hmm. you go, oh, flat three damage is good. It's uh, yeah, flat three on the yeah. haywire on the vehicle, and then it's uh, D three on the. Oh, that's uh, right, yeah, D three. But it, yeah, Always it's like strength up. three looks bad, but then you're like AP three D three damage, and it auto wounds vehicles on four is like against vehicles. This is no joke. Yeah, like against my night spinner, I was like ah, just the mm-hmm. weight of the weight of D three damage just destroyed right. it. Then you're still getting D three extra mortals on sixes to wound. Right. Like you lose the mortals on four ups, but if you get something through, like getting D three damage versus the one mortal wound. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it better, I think. Yeah. But uh yeah, I mean I'm loving this. Um I'm loving some of the previews we've been seeing. Absolutely. Specifically the Leagues of Voltanzac. <laughs> oh, we got Space Dwarves back. We got them. I, they actually did it. Actually, I did not think this was ever going to happen. The Mad Lads actually did it. <laughs> now, what are the chances that they accidentally released that preview on April Fools? What's the chances that they didn't think about it and they did it on accident? <laughs> because, like, is know. there is there a chance that they didn't realize it was April Fools and then they're like, wait, people actually... Wait a minute. <laughs> people think this is a joke. We have to give them something real now. Right. And then they previewed the model. Maybe. It yeah. might have been. Who knows? <laughs> but, man... The, the model looks good i do love their april fools thing though i'm pretty sure si- this new sisters line was also announced april april 1st was it yeah i Those think it was bastards. yeah the sisters they're so, like double bluff <laughs> like you know what <laughs> they I mean? love the double bluff they really do people called it though i saw that people were like i think this mm. is a bluff like oh as soon as i saw it i was like double bluff squats yep. are coming yep well <laughs> fact dude, that trailer was way too high tech for right it to be a like, bluff Are you kidding me they paid someone and, a decent amount to make that. And like, honestly, there's... we've been hearing some rumors right. around the little birdies have been talking, and we've seen rumors. Although, in all honesty, I was thinking more like a, an ab human unit you could take with guard or something. I was not expecting a whole codex. Oh, like... hell yeah. I was kind of, I was hoping for a whole codex. I was hoping uh, yeah, for right. it. Yeah, uh, right. I've been saying for a while, kind of as a meme, but now I'm like... They do look pretty good. I was like, <laughs> I'll be taking squats when they come out no matter what. <laughs> now I'm looking at them like, mm-hmm. mm, maybe I wasn't kidding. Those look pretty good. I love dwarves. dwarves I just think cool. dwarves are dwarves cool. Dwarves are cool. I love the whole like mm-hmm. reclaiming the lost, like their their technology. They're all like about yeah. technology and treasure. And I even like, cool. I even love because like old squats even had like a little bit of like a Viking theme to them. Like they were like Viking bikers. Yeah. 
Oh, if they bring back the land train. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> now, what if these guys lean more into the Viking side? I mean, if they're like Viking space dwarves. I'm in. I'm 100% in, especially after Space Wolves win a wolf meme. Yeah. I need another Viking They went all line. three. Right? Like, if they focus on, like, the Viking dwarf thing, I... You're in. I'm in. <laughs> like, I'm in, like, legitimately. They're, they're cool. They're... I love dwarves. Dwarves are cool. Like, mm-hmm. we, we have some haters in our local meadow of dwarves, but <laughs> I think they're, they're just jealous, honestly. Johnny dwarves are fucking badass. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I really do like dwarves, especially if they lean into the Viking thing. Right. And if it's all bikes and trikes and trains. Right. Oh. <laughs> trains and automobiles. <laughs> Fuck, like, trains, planes, and automobiles. I want to see some dwarves. I'm excited to see the rest of the model range. Yes. I want to see what they do with vehicles. It'd be kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. If they do... I actually think it'd be kind of cool if they did, like, the a- AOS. Not the same, but, like gyro like almost yeah, kind like of the steampunky kind yeah of, like yeah. almost like da vinci sketch type like <laughs> vehicles that'd be kind of cool i like that vibe a lot what do you now how do you want them to play i kind of hope they're kind of brutish you know like come up and destroy stuff with their uh their dark age tech yeah like i think that'd be cool i just don't want them to be like tau but close range you know what i mean mm-hmm like, I worry they might be a little similar to Tau, but it's hard to say. We have it's so hard. no yeah. idea what direction we're going to We have no precedent. Mm-hmm. We have, like, no, like, I, don't, I can't think of something the army, the game is lacking for, like, army. I don't, and, like, we have a, a slow combat army with Death Guard, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> and but, like, I guess we don't have a slow shooty army, so maybe yeah. they lean into that, but, I mean, I love close combat. Dude, I need some dwarves with war hammers. That's for I, sure. And oh, pickaxes and such. Oh, some, uh, what's that? I can't believe I, I'm forgetting. Grimly? <laughs> what's the... Uh, Gimli. The, Gimli. Yeah, Gimli, Gimli. Lord of the Rings. Yep, oh, I yeah. need a Gimli. I need a Tobias. Absolutely. Uh, oh, Manus? Mantis? Like. Tobias Manus? The Danny DeVito? I need him. <laughs> need him. <laughs> yeah. Toboggan? Ma- yeah, Man- Dr. Doctor- or Mantis Toboggan, Toboggan. MD. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have, yeah, if they have, like, an apothecary type unit, yep, give it's them gotta the, be Mantis. the DeVito, like, bald on top with the horseshoe of hair. <laughs> yep. Dr. Mantis Toboggan. <laughs> gotta write that on, like, a name tag right. somewhere. Toboggan MD. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be great. Have a little monster, oh. monster condom. I'd even... <laughs> <laughs> Peeking out of his pocket or something. Yep. Or on the bottom of the base, like, yep. he dropped it. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Dropped my... <laughs> <Monster> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be glorious. Oh, a little sunny a, reference. Oh, that's the best. Oh, I'd almost be tempted to do, like, my own... I don't even know what they're gonna call, like, their chapters. Are they, like, different leagues, or are they, like... Yeah. Maybe different, like... Uh, I don't know. What's... Different guilds, or... I, I don't guilds, know. Guilds, like, maybe? Yeah, I could see that. You gotta have, like, a League of Moria. <laughs> really go Lord of the Rings, oh, like... so cool. <laughs> I love it. Dude, all, like... We'll be playing Eldar and uh, Leagues of Votan, like, never thought I'd die fighting with an elf, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> what do you, how about dying with a friend? <laughs> right? Like, it'll be <laughs> yeah. glorious. We'll have elves and dwarves going. Oh, it'd be the best. Talk about a cool pair-up for a team. Of Actually, though, that, dude, we could have, like, a Legolas Gimli, like... Theme? Theme as our, uh, like, like, friendly doubles. Like, we take, we have our armies, and then we have our characters that one represents Legolas, dude. one Gimli. All right. I mean, we might even have to do this. Actually, like take you, like whoever takes the the elves has like a Age of Sigmar with a bow. It has mm-hmm. to be with a bow because that's yep. cool. Even if you just model like a bow on their back or yep. something, like they gotta have the bow. Yep. And then Gimli, uh, you gotta have the ah, yeah, yep. like oh man, gotta have orange orange beard. Dude, yeah, like we were talking like uh, doing the Adepticon doubles. Mm-hmm. This would be a really cool thematic army, man. <laughs> if somehow we could put together a board, like some kind of Lord of Rings Display board. board, like that'd be sweet. That would be pretty cool. I would love that. I think <laughs> That's that, an idea, I think man. People would love that. Kinda I think we squ- should we should go with. <laughs> kind of hope squats come out by then. I, for real. Like I'm, it sucks because I'm like, I want to just start converting now from mm-hmm. AOS, 
But I'm like, I have nothing to go. I don't know what, what's <laughs> right? going to happen. I don't know what to convert. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that too. I was like, dude, yeah, the the like steampunk dwarves would make some cool conversions. I was like, I don't even know what they're going to yeah, have yet. Right? It's like hard to convert. We have a single infantry model. Like, right? Don't even know what the weapon is. It kind of looks... It looks like a fusion gun. It looks like tau a fusion, fusion gun. <laughs> looks a little tau. I've seen... So one like theory is like mm-hmm. there's this not really too spoken about like race that helps tau it's a yeah, mining the race demiurg the demiurg yeah some people are saying what if this was ah. was the dwarves but people didn't really know what it was because you know they're the mining right. race that developed technology for tau what yeah. if this is I mean, them that so, would be a pretty cool in lore i believe it is the fusion weapons that tau like the demiurg provide like help the tau with yeah because it's it's the vespid crystal tech is how they get their uh cyclic and their ion weaponry um but the demiurg is how they get like their fusion like what if these are the demiurg ah uh, that'd be kind of cool it'd be kind of cool what if tau got an ally that would dude. be dude dude that would be kind of cool i'm just i'm scared it's just gonna be like the 18th or 19th imperium army which is cool it's, like it's, it's probably fine. gonna be that it's probably gonna be yeah. that but at the same time they're kind of at odds with the imperium exactly like yeah the, that article especially made it sound like they're an uneasy alliance which the imperium has had those with eldar like right. exactly they have i mean mm-hmm. gilman and his waifu <laughs> she, she used to be dark eldar yeah. even like hey right? like anything's possible he's got an eldar on the count on his council in secret but he's got an eldar in, but he does have an eldar <laughs> right so i mean anything's possible I, xenos I, another faction <laughs> that would be pretty cool if tau could ally with the dwarves it'd be kind of awesome that would be really cool <laughs> especially because they're like a ab a, like an a human a humanoid thing right yeah i love this <laughs> it'd be kind of cool i gw please please don't, i mean please tyranid has got uh like a imperium esque yeah like a faction they can ally with in gsc yeah like, and you know they could do a thing too where it's like what if you could ally imperium or tau right and you could do the gsc thing where you have tau that's and- actually oh, kind of okay. cool yeah make them a little unique too because then you have ways to combine like tau and imperial like that's kind of cool take a knight with a storm surge <laughs> oh god the duo no one ever don't knew even they wanted. Uh, <laughs> 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 that we never knew we wanted that we probably don't need <laughs> that we don't need but we want but it'd be kind of cool. cool i mean i'm loving this yeah i, I really I mean, I always, like, I look at some Xenos and it's like, man, it'd be kind of nice if, like, Necrons or someone had, like, a al- I know they're not allies of Necrons, but, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, some of the Xenos need a little bit of an ally love, you know? Tau, right? need, Tau needs a little bit of a friend. I'm not like, saying. The Demiurg. It'd be cool. It'd be really cool. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. And so part of me is saying, too, because, like, the reason the squats left kind of a thing were, like, they were devoured by Tyranids, and then that, like, lone squat, like, fought against Leviathan and, like, bought enough time for them to escape. So, like, 10th edition, starter set, Tyranids versus Leagues of Votan? I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> That'd be pretty flippin' sweet. Except they're gonna need Space Marines in their starter set. They're gonna but... need Space Marines. So let's be honest. The little unrealistic, like hopeful part of me is like, what about squats? that's a box set I can keep <laughs> both sides of. You what know if what I mean? they're in just in Space Marine 2.0? Uh, <sighs> just kidding. They won't be. They won't be. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm excited. I. I'm also excited because you main Tyranids. Mm-hmm. We know squats are gonna have some anti Tyranid tech. They're oh, angry. Yeah. They're, they're, they're angry. They're upset. Yeah. Dwarves hold grudges. <laughs> They're angry. Yeah, I love all the memes up where it's like, oh, dwarves are coming back. Tyranids get seconds. Like, <laughs> yeah, the guy with, like, doing, like, the... <laughs> right. Yeah. Little Tyranid with his hand. Like, yeah. You were delicious the first time around. Let's see how it is this time. You're done. <laughs> I've seen, like, some people have, like, little fan theories where it's like, they were reported to be destroyed, but maybe mm. it was just so the Imperium would cut off any help to them, so in hopes that they would ah, die. You know, yeah. there's, there's ways to, like, bring mm. them back, you know? Right. Could be some Imperial propaganda. Yeah, like, the Inquisitors were like, hey, let's just say they're dead and not help them. <laughs> Right. And the Tyranids pull mm. through. Well, that's, like, yeah, one of the theories were, like, 
the Imperium and them had an uneasy alliance. Then once Gilliman kind of like was in stasis and shit, it fell out. And now that Gilliman's back, they're like, oh, now he can rekindle this alliance with mm-hmm. the Leagues of Votan. Like, mm-hmm. well, you know, if anyone could cool. do it, it would be Gilliman. Oh, absolutely. People hate Gilliman, but honestly, he's cool. He's cool. He's, he's like true. one of the only rational, like reasonable minds in the forty first. He's millennium. diplomatic. Like he's willing mm-hmm. to work. Like for as um, like crazy and fanatical that the Imperium has become, Gilman's willing to work with Xenos right. to achieve the Imperium's best goal. Not just mm-hmm. work with him, like not treat him like fucking trash. <laughs> like he's cool. Like right. He's able to like build like diplomatic relationships. Gilman's a straight up G. He's a straight up G. <laughs> for real. Hey, yeah, G for Gil. Oh, I thought um, you did that on purpose. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> accidental jokes. Yeah. 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 Very cool, though. I love Gil, and, like, as a character. It's just fun. That's why I like the Ultramarines. That's why I want to play him, because mm-hmm. he's cool. Gilman's cool. I, I, used to des- I used to despise Gilman and, like, the Ultramarines, because mm-hmm. I was the, very much the... Oh, blue Smurfs! Ha, ha, ha. Very much like Mary Sue, covered in plot armor, like yeah. Then you, but then you keep reading the lore, and you're like, okay, they, they kind of are a little cool. cool. And then you read the Gilman R- resurrection scene, mm-hmm. and you're like, that's pretty cool, <laughs> right? You're like, I don't know how much I hate this. <laughs> you're right. like, What's happening? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I even love, yeah, like, on McCrag and stuff, it goes into, like, the Roman architecture kind of thing. And, like, just, they're very cool. They, they remind me of, like, ancient diplomatic Rome kind right. of thing. Like, and just, I mean, everyone likes, like, competency. So, mm-hmm. like, seeing Gilman have that's cool. <laughs> right, like, when everyone's just fanatically anti, like, xenophobic. And, yeah, like... just stupid. Uh, I can't, it's not, it's not superstitious. It's, like, zealous, maybe? Yeah. Uh, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, like like Black Templars. Part of the reason I love Black Templars, but like they were mm-hmm. Zeno scum. <laughs> like they're not gonna work with Zenos. No, yeah, Gilman's awesome. Love love me some Bobby G. Who doesn't want a fire sword? Nobody, <laughs> nobody. An avatar. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think with that we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna look uh, forward to this bad this data sheet update data beta. Oh my lord! It is it's been going, a long day. It's been going, a long day. I'm just having a stroke. Don't mind me. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to see what they balance. Though I'm not thinking. I think Harlequins will get hit a lot. I'm not thinking Craft Worlds are going to get touched much yet, because like we haven't seen much Craft World specific data. It's all been Harlequins. Like I don't think they deserve a nerf yet until we see how they I balance think... out. My prediction is maybe the indirect, and I think Swooping Hawks and Baharoth are going to catch a nerf. Maybe, yeah. I think because, like, based on, like, the Art of War guys saying that they were talking to some people in GW hmm. and trying to get in community, they were, like, in communication with them. And I think as that goes, they're obviously really high on the Eldar. So I think, yeah. I think, I think they might catch a nerf there, which, you know. Mm hmm. The part of me that loves playing with them is like, no! <laughs> but mm-hmm. the rational part and the part that. I, I think they should be nerfed. I, I do. Yeah. Like, that part. Like, as much as I hate having a book come out and immediately be nerfed, mm. um, I do think that Swooping Hawks could probably catch a nerf. Just a small one. No points. No, I don't think anything needs a points upgrade. Uh, you know, maybe, like, I think sw- I think they should do, like, gradular point increases. Like, you can take one support weapon for X points, and then for each one you do, it costs 10 points more. Yeah, kind of like the Tau weapons. You're yeah, saying. like I like that yeah. a lot. Instead of like the buggy were the buggy nerf, where they just said nope, no more than three. Right, because like, then like even if it costs more and it becomes less competitive, like people can still play with all their toys that they bought nine of. Yeah, like, and potentially painted and put mm-hmm, their soul into. And now you can only take three ever. It's like oh, that hurts. That feels bad, man. Like yeah. people, like I don't ever want six planes to be good. <laughs> right. I want it to be bad, actually. I want it to be horrible. But I think you should be able to play it. Right. Like, like you should be able to build your list how you want. It right. was one of the big advertising pieces going into ninth. And now it's like, now it's I like, don't know what they're going to change. There's so many list building restrictions now. Yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah. But, yeah. Overall, it's a super fun book, though. <laughs> yeah, overall, super fun book. Mm-hmm. We'll definitely be reviewing, hopefully not many nerfs if there's not many right. nerfs I th- I'm, I'm very excited for where we're going Dude, if they don't give death guard and sisters a little something in this uh, data slate like i don't even know <laughs> i know i'm i'm kind of wor- like 
maybe don't increase cherubs and maybe let me shoot two cherubs in a turn. <laughs> like, I don't know why that's so OP. On they're top of the other things, yeah, shot. they're single use. Like, I don't know, they're not that overpowered. No. Like, but yeah, please, please help Death Guard. Please mm-hmm. reverse the point changes and then buff them <laughs> on top. Don't just mm-hmm. don't just undo the bad that you did. Right, they were probably they'll still just be subpar. Yeah, right? they were probably expecting a little bit of a buff and then you nerf them again. Yeah, <laughs> like... so like instead of nerf, remove nerf mm-hmm. and then buff. Especially with how strong recent codices have been, like, yeah, they could use some love. And then, like sisters, I'm worried, like, like they're being held together a little bit by bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Is that good? No, but that's just the way of the world. So when that yeah. gets nerfed, probably in this data sheet, data balance, data, uh, they, <laughs> <laughs> sheet slate, sheet slate, uh, they will if it's just that, and maybe they bump something down a little bit, mm-hmm. like sacks, they put back to where they were. We're gonna be in some hurt, I think, if yeah. they if they just like do that. Now, if they give sisters like, hey, maybe some of your tanks can be a little bit more usable, and like, I really want to see Paragon War suits go down a little bit more because mm-hmm. like those are so cool models, but man, they're not survivable. Way overcosted, right? Yeah, now, they're yeah. they're crazy, and I I want to see that kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. we'll see we'll see where they go. Yeah, I it'll still be don't exciting. Think, I still don't think sisters are bad. I mean, we'll see what the the bodyguard change, but like right now, I still. Yeah. They're not as bad as their win rate says. Like, last week they had a 32%, and then the week before they had a 20-some percent. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're that bad, but they are hard to play, so I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I'm excited to see what they do. I hope nothing's too heavy-handed. Right. It, is that not just a feels bad? Like, Yeah. It just feels bad. It's like, you, write, you first write this oppressive book and then you nerf it to the ground it sucks it's like i'd rather have nothing (laughs) right like Like you got my hopes up like no it's just bad i have these super cool fun rules please don't just take them away you know what i mean like and that's what i'm worried about too like the elder book i think is pointed everything's pointed correctly i'm worried that they'll say oh howling banshees are good let's point Mm -hmm. them up and now they're 20 points a model now they're Mm -hmm. not takeable like it's just pray and hope but uh, yeah, on, with that, we're going to sign off. So uh, take care. Yeah, happy on being. Take care.